I've had a couple of my students down here at the golf projects recently really suffering getting this transition phase taking place in their golf swing. In this natural motion you see all the golfers on tour do time and time again. They'll stand up to the ball, get up to the top of the swing, no problem at all. But as soon as they begin that downswing, it becomes very difficult for them to allow this effortless power, effortless speed, effortless transition, this shift forward through the ball, getting this weight transfer to take place from the trail side to the lead side, which is why in today's video, we're gonna be talking you through a step-by-step -step tutorial I would highly recommend taking on board if you're someone who really suffers with getting this transition, this shift taking place in your downswing. So for those of you who are new to the channel, welcome. My name is Harry PJ, golf professional, transforming golfers worldwide from the golf projects. So make sure you drop a comment down below the tips or drills video topic you'd like me to cover in a future video. And if you enjoy watching this video, be sure to hit the subscribe button and click the bell icon so all so you don't miss out on the latest and greatest content coming to you every Tuesday and Friday at 6 p.m. GMT. So before we dive into this routine drill that I'm gonna show you, I want to show you the tendencies. It's really important that we understand what's going on in our golf swings to be able to then bring in the elements needed to get this transition, to get this shift taking place. And a lot of golfers, they'll get to the top of the swing, no problem at all, nice and easy, working their way up to the top in this nice one plane motion. Some may be yet a little bit on the outside, on the inside, but they'll find a way up to the top of their swing. But as soon as they begin that downswing phase, something happens. They try too hard. So when I say try too hard, just bear with me one second. You want to understand where I'm coming from here. They'll get to the top of the swing and they'll try really hard to get this weight transfer taking place. They'll really try and force the hips, shift the hips forward to get these hips firing out the way and towards the target. Now the problem with this, well there's two problems with this. Number one, the first problem we have this with this, as soon as we start this dancing phase and we try and get this weight transfer, this weight shifting from the trail side to the lead side by shifting our weight, getting our hip to fire towards the target, what's this causing me to do here? Have a look from this camera angle first. So when I do this motion here, it's causing me to slide towards the golf ball. But from this camera angle, you can see I'm shifting a little bit too much in this lateral motion here, as opposed to getting the rotation required to make solid contact with the golf ball. So it's causing me to get this weird action taking place to begin with. And this is what I noticed a few of my clients do when they came to see me. They were getting to the top of the swings, really trying very hard to get this action taking place. But the problem with this is the clubs take reaching out this way as the body's moving this way. So then we're going to end up probably hitting the ground first. Our upper body is staying very much behind the golf ball. Not too bad with the driver when you want to be hitting up on the ball. We're still going to get stuck though. With the irons, it's game over. But from this angle here, we're getting this stuck motion here with the irons. And then we've got to really try and force our hands forward and time that release to take place. So... This is why we want to be changing it, because we get too stuck, it makes things difficult for us to get this transition, this natural rotation and turn to take place. So here's what we want to see instead. So first off, without the club, we just want to be getting ourselves used to just twisting back and forth in the golf swing. So I'm gonna get you to place your hands either side of your shoulders like this here, across your shoulders. And we're just going to feel this motion taking place in the back swing. So obviously our main priority is getting the downswing right, but we've got to get ourselves set in this natural position, this turn and twisted position at the top. So all I'm thinking here as I'm doing this motion here is getting my back to face towards the net here in front of me. For those of you who are practicing this at the driving range, it's going to feel like you're back is facing towards your target, the flag that you may be going for, and even more so on the course. This is the same feeling, trying to get that back to face towards the target or the net if you're at the golf projects. So we're swinging up to the top, just getting this motion here to begin with. And then for the down swing, we're just allowing this chest to turn and face towards the target, almost towards this corner here. If we get the chest turning and facing this target here, look what happens. I have this tendency of lateral shifting and keeping my upper body behind me. So it's really important that when you're doing this, we're getting this turn up to the top here, and then we're allowing our chest to face to this corner here. So a good example is if, if you're on the driving range trying this again, we don't want 
the chest and stern in the middle of your chest to face towards this corner here at the driving range, we want it to face the corner behind you, almost trying to get your chest towards the person hitting behind you, whether you're a right-handed player or a left-handed player. And that just allows you to create this sense of awareness of where that weight is transferring from the trail side to the lead side throughout the swing. Adding on to this, I see a few golfers and one golfer in particular came to see me. He was getting this shifting motion that we noticed. When we get this shifting motion, what are we doing here? We're trying to transfer our weight too early in the downswing. And when I say too early in the downswing, what I mean by this is we'll get to the top and get this forward motion here again. So in order for us to completely stop this, we've got to delay that weight shift, that weight transferring in the downswing. Only for a split second in the golf swing, but to you it's gonna feel like a very long second the way we do this drill now. So club comes away again, we're going to place our hands back across our shoulders and we're going to just twist to the top, feeling this motion here with the back facing towards the target. The first initial move you want to do to get that start of the downswing correct, to initiate that transition phase, rather than trying to force all the pressure straight away going on to the lead side of the body, I want you to delay this. We want to feel almost like we're maintaining this pressure, if not adding more pressure, staying on the trail side of the body. So nothing's going to move, my upper body's gonna stay very static here now, once I've set myself into the top of the backswing position here, and all I'm doing is I'm creating this little bit more pressure, almost like a squatting motion, pressing down into this trail side of the body. The reason for this is when we get this transition and we try and force the weight going too far this way, well, we're applying more force, we're applying more pressure into the trail side of the body here, which is great, but we're applying it in this direction to start off with. And for those of you who aren't aware of ground reaction forces, we use ground reaction forces in the golf swing, so the way we press down and push back up to create more power. And if we're pressing and adding this pressure, transferring this weight in this direction, then we're going to get an equal and opposite reaction pushing back up in this direction. A good example of this is when you do a squatting motion. You have to go down to push upwards and jump upwards. And when you're trying to do that squat jump, the same thing applies. You're just doing an even bigger version of it. So here, if we're pressing this way, getting this shift forward again, trying really hard to get this hip firing transfer of weight onto this lead side, we're just gonna end up pushing outwards like this here and getting too far away from the golf ball. Going back to what I mentioned before, just taking the club quickly up to the top, pressing here and then pushing away like so. So if we can get this slight little pressure this move taking place to begin that downswing. From this trail side, we're adding the pressure and applying this force in this direction here. So what's gonna happen in the downswing now? When we get this turn taking place now, we're gonna be pushing off this side and then it's gonna initiate this transition phase to react and as we're pushing upwards, it's gonna push in this direction. So we're going to twist right the way through to target. It's almost like a catapult effect taking place in your golf swing. So we're getting to the top of the swing here. We're pressing down like so. Then we're pushing upwards from the trail side. But you will be transferring the weight onto this lead side. This slight little delay here is only gonna take place for a split second in your golf swing. Think about it, the majority of us, the average swing speed of a seven iron, I'm gonna guess an estimate of around 70, miles an hour. So at 70 miles an hour taking place in that downswing phase, we haven't got a lot of time to think, oh, well, I need to make sure I'm keeping it in this side for too long. That's not gonna happen. What's gonna happen is because of the ground reaction force is taking place, we're going to be turning up to the top, pressing into the ground this way, and then we're going to push back off, and that's gonna really help you feel and allow this sternum, the center of your chest, to turn towards that corner behind you when you were re rehearsing this at the range or even more so importantly out on the golf course but if you're someone that's struggling to feel where this pressure is moving during the swing you can use something 
as simple as the downshift board. I use this with quite a few of my clients here at the Golf Projects because it makes it so much easier for them to understand where the pressure is moving during that golf swing. And it also gives you really good confirmation that you're doing this right or you're doing this not so right and you can make adjustments needed, you know, exaggerate the move maybe a little bit more. So I'm just gonna place this on the ground like so here. And I'm gonna place my feet either side like so. And what this is going to do, as you can see, I'm rocking back and forth, okay? And this is allowing me now to feel where the majority of the pressure is moving during this motion here as I'm just moving back and forth, just creating this little impulse, shifting back, shifting forth. So when we use this board, I'm just going to set up with the majority of the pressure on the lead side here, because the intention is as we turn into the top of the swing, you can see that we're adding this pressure now into the trail side of the body. The key here is when we're using this, we want to maintain this position on the board. We want to keep the majority of the pressure on this side. If we shift too early, then we're gonna feel the board move and the pressure move onto the lead side too early. So when we set up here, we're turning up to the top of the swing and then we're applying this pressure here, keeping the pressure on the trail side. And that's the checkpoint we need now to be able to push off this right foot and get this weight shifting now onto the lead side of the body. And this now can allow you to really push off and get this sternum turning and working through towards the target. So I'm just going to rehearse this just one more time. So we're setting up from the lead side here to really get this turn and pressure taking place into the top of the backswing, applying this pressure and then pressing upwards and through to that finished position. So I've had a couple of rehearsal drills using the downshift board and a couple beforehand. So, and now we can begin using this with the club we can begin doing this motion with the golf club so just to begin with i'm only going to go at around 10 20 percent of my full swing speed so i'm just going to take the club now and it's the same feeling the same principle applies with this we're turning and twisting up to the top of our swing getting this back to face towards the target and then we're applying this pressure into the trail side of the body that's the feeling and you can see here nothing's moving whatsoever from this position it's just me squatting down, adding this pressure, keeping this pressure into the trail side of the body. With the board, I'm just thinking, right, I'm applying the pressure in the trail side, adding the pressure, even more pressure in the trail side. Then I can push off this trail foot, this trail side, to get this sternum working right the way through towards the corner behind me. So all in one motion, dead smooth, imagining I'm just being filmed in slow-mo, so it's up to the top, back to target, pressure down, push off, sternum to the corner. And again, we can just go a little bit quicker doing this. So up to the top, pressure, sternum to wall. One more time, just going nice and slow. Up, down, push up. And now once you get used to doing those motions dead slow, almost in stages, we can begin to build this up a little bit more into a full speed swing. So now I'm just going to think, okay, 40% working it up, down, push up. Now we're gonna go 60%. And now we can work it all the way into 70. And then we can go all the way up to 80. And I would recommend just keeping it at 80. We don't want to be going full out doing this because then we're going to lose control of the flight of the shot. Some may, will go right or left whilst you're working on this and getting used to this motion. But before we start hitting a few shots, I just want to bring in something that I noticed one of my students do in the session. And this one thing is really, really important to do. When he started hitting balls, we almost went into it too quickly. We almost went straight into it after having a couple of practice swings, nice and slow, then started hitting some shots and it was very difficult for him to get this movement taking place on the downswing, this slight little pressure, but more importantly, getting this rotation all the way through to finish. So I'm going to introduce another training aid that I've been using quite recently, the true turn. So 
all I'm just going to do is just twist this here, get this all set in position. Okay, so if you're someone that's really suffering with this same issue and trying to really get this turn taking place and struggle to do this, may not realize it, but you do have the tendency of, you can feel it a little bit. What you can do is use this device here. And if you grip it either side like so, with these two points here, just underneath the armpit like so. What this causes you to do, it really forced you to get this turn taking place all the way up to the top. This really helps you to get this thoracic rotation, is the correct terminology for this, to get this turn all the way up to the top. Really feel this exaggerated motion of getting the back towards the target. You can see there, it's so easy for me to do now. If I just make a swing, keeping those two points touching the body, I can just simply rotate, working my way up, all the way up to the top of the swing, just like this here. And the same now can apply for the downswing, like I mentioned earlier. We want to be ensuring that we're getting this turn taking place on the downswing. You can see how much easier it is for me now, if I was just to add this little press in between, to get this turn taking place. I'm twisting up to the top, pressing down, twisting through to finish. And where's my sternum pointing there? Well, you can't see it. Exactly, it's pointing towards that corner very, very much so. You can see how exaggerated it is from this camera here. As I'm working my way up, down, and pushing right the way through to finish. So you can get one of these and rehearse a couple of times. If you're not too sure whether you're doing that rotation correct, you can film yourself as well and you can send it to me if you want to on Skillist just to check this. You can get one of these devices anyway that's gonna help you just get this turn taking place here and right the way through to finish. That definitely makes it easy for me. I can really feel that in my thoracic spine there, really turning and twisting, getting this motion taking place up to the top, wow, and then swinging through to finish. So if you're someone that's suffering with getting that rotation taking place in the golf swing, then yeah, I'd consider looking at getting one of these for you. So I'm gonna put this away now. I've had a couple of swings, just getting used to that added increase in rotation just to help me get this sternum facing towards the target. And now we can begin using the golf club. I'm just going to do a little practice swing quickly, just without the club hands across the shoulders, just so I can feel that same motion, twisting back, pressing down, turning through to the corner there. Perfect. So now moving back to the seven iron, let's see if we can complement those two things we've been working on. We've been working on that press and pushing away, getting the sternum to face towards the wall. We've spoken about obviously that rotation either side. Let's see if we can implement those two now in one motion. So I'm turning up to the top here, pressing down into the ground like so, and I'm pushing up and through to finish. So those three moves are all you need to be able to get this shift, this transition taking place naturally for that smooth and effortless golf swing. You can see there when we start to just build this up into a full swing here, how easy it looks. I'm keeping my arms and hands, shoulders dead relaxed doing this. I'm allowing them just to flow, just to follow that swing. Because we're getting this turn, this rotation, this shift taking place in its natural motion the way it should be, more of a twist as opposed to a slide forward, we can just let it go. We can just let the arms and shoulders and hands do whatever they want to do. Just keep them on and they're just there for the ride, for the swing. So we're turning up to the top, adding the pressure and then sternum to the corner behind us, all in one motion. That felt quite nice, dead relaxed, maybe a little bit too relaxed in terms of I didn't swing enough through the ball because I closed that face down a little bit too much. So I'm just going to hit another one, maybe ramp up the speed on the way through a little bit, exaggerate this press and turn a little bit more. Let's see if that can get me hitting this golf ball a little bit straighter. It's a bit pulled to the left again, but that was a really nice strike. And the benefit of doing this motion as well is this works for every single club in the bag, all the way from pitching wedge and your wedges, all the way up to 
the driver, which is where you're gonna see the most difference as you begin getting used to this. So let's have a go with the driver, same motion, same feel. Let's see if we can get this natural motion taking place, this shift transition, turning through the ball, taking place with the driver. So is that good for IO there? Excellent. Oh, and I also forgot to mention that we are using down at the Golf Projects a brand new Trapman IO. It's a fantastic piece of kit. Absolutely love what you get to see. In fact, I'm gonna show you what this can do. Let me just get the two screens there. We will be able to see now a really cool video of the driver making contact with the golf ball. So let's see how we get on doing this. I'm just feeling it up to the top, really getting this turn, press, pressure into the ground, and then turning and getting that sternum to face towards the corner behind me. That was a nice hit. Slight little draw. You can see there a touch out the toe, which is absolutely fine for the driver. Great shot to finish on. So for those of you who enjoyed the video, make sure you drop a comment down below with tips or drills topic you'd like me to cover in a future video. Be sure to check out this one here, which will talk you through a really simple routine after you've worked hard on this motion here on how you can get the golf swing working on a nice singular plane as opposed to getting too far out or in. And the two products that I've mentioned in this video, the downshift board and the true turn training aid, you can get those at Golf Swing Systems. Just use the link in the description below and use the code SURE5 and you will get yourself 5% off on anything on their website, including those two fantastic devices. Thanks for watching, stay tuned, lots more to come and we'll see you in the next video.